welcome to the last recap of the year and uh, what I want to do is get started right away with uh, mail that's come in. Uh, first off, Dennis sent this uh, picture of James Adams in his uh, Christmas sweater or sweatshirt and if you look closely at it, you'll notice that it's actually uh, a, a copy of a thing that was in the movie Die Hard, greatest Christmas movie ever made. Uh, good going, James. I love the shirt. And, uh, you know, a lot of us think that uh, Christmas doesn't actually start until Hans Gruber falls from the Nakatomi Towers. Okay, now, going on to the mail, we got an update from uh, our Southeast Asian correspondent, Bob McCarthy, who sent these pictures. And I'm, uh, what I'm going to do is say what he says, uh, so you understand it. He was... It says, I was honored at the harvesting of wasp larvae in the village of Danchen in Thailand's northeast. This is a rare treat, a sort of dessert that would replace ice cream. The nest is burned to kill the live wasps only at night, and the larvae harvested and eaten as dessert. Now it goes on to say that the taste is somewhat creamy like the tail end of a grasshopper, whatever that tastes like, but with a slightly sweetness of cream or whole milk. Bob, that's absolutely disgusting. But thanks for the report. And then finally, uh, Bill Brown sent uh, an email where he's talking about the proposed Mets uh, lineup for uh, 2019. Now, you know, we're still only uh, a little more than halfway through the off season. But he complains about the concept of using Todd Frazier at third base as opposed to Wilma Flores. And he talks about uh, home run production versus money. And I gotta tell you, Billy, my overall reaction is, uh, I think Mets fans, we fall in love with ball players like uh, Conforto, Ligaris, uh Flores, uh, Ramos, McNeil. And the truth of the matter is they're just not all that good. Uh, what the Mets did in, 19, in the early 1980s was added impact players like Gary Carter and Keith Hernandez. When they were competitive uh, in 2000, 2001, they added an impact player like Mike Piazza. To be honest with you, I really want to see players like uh, uh, Bryce Harper, Mike Trout, Joe Maurer, uh, JT Ray Almuto, uh, Manny Machado. I don't, and I don't care how much they've got to spend to get it done. But I want to see us compete. So anyway, that's a, a general reaction. Now, because it's the end of the year, I decided that we would do a, a, a set of awards to the best, the very best of 2018. And here are my selections. Well, for the best of 2018, let's start right off with TV series. Ordinarily, I would expect to say that the best TV series of 2018 was Game of Thrones but we didn't have Game of Thrones in 2018. Now, when I look at the other ones that we pay attention to, uh, House of Cards, Billions, uh, The Man in the High Castle, in my opinion, all of those shows, they've got their plots spinning out of control. They're completely implausible now. Uh, so I'm gonna say that the best series that we watched in 2018 was an Amazon entry, and that was uh, Jack Ryan. Jack Ryan is uh, based on one of the uh, Tom Clancy books, or maybe several of them for, for all I know, uh, but very, very well done, very action-packed, really, really good show. Now let's shift over to the world of sports and ask yourself, who was the best athlete in New York in uh, 2018? And you got some candidates from the teams that I more or less follow. Uh, from the Mets, uh, of course, Jacob deGrom. Uh, from uh, the Yankees, Aaron Judge. For the Giants, uh, a rookie, Saquon Barkley, probably going to be Rookie of the Year. And for the Jets, their new quarterback, Sam Donald, who had a, himself a pretty good year, even though the Jets didn't. Uh, when you look at all of them, you've got to say that the absolute best New York professional athlete in 2018 was Jacob deGrom. 32 starts, a 10-9 record, which should have been over 20 wins, 
if you watch the Mets at all, and pitched to a 1.7 ERA, picks up a Cy Young Award for a team that went absolutely no place. So best athlete in New York in 2018, Jacob deGrom. Let's go back to TV, and on TV, you've got a question about what are the best reality shows to watch? And the best reality shows in 2018, I've got to judge it based on what I watch. I mean, I'm not looking at any of these Real Housewives shows. I'm not looking at the Kardashians. I'll pay attention to Storage Wars, The Deadliest Catch, things like that. But why, by a wide margin, the finest uh, reality TV show is Live PD. And uh, Live PD, uh, Friday and Saturday nights, as far as I'm concerned, must watch TV. They follow eight police departments around the country in real time. And that show is just super well done. So best reality show for 2018, Live PD. Now turning to uh, true crime and staying with the kind of a police theme here, You've got a number of entries this year that were all pretty good. Uh, you know, season two of Making a Murderer, uh, a new thing on Narcos. You've got shows on TV like, uh, on the other cable channels like uh, Kenda, uh, Homicide for the Holidays, uh, Criminal Confessions, things like that. But I think that the one that beats them all is a December entry from Netflix, and that is uh, a show called An Innocent Man. An Innocent Man is based on a book by Tom Grisham, or uh, John Grisham, I should say, and John Grisham actually shows up in the uh, show. I think it's only you know, five, maybe six episodes, but very, very good indeed. Now, let's get to uh, things closer to home and ask yourself, or I ask myself, what was the best uh, event at the American Legion post 1456 this year. And you've got a lot to choose from. Uh, you've got these barbecues, Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day weekend, the Acosta barbecue. And uh, those things take advantage of great weather and uh, the beautiful setting that, uh, uh, that the Legion has. And I'll throw into this mix uh, in terms of considering the best events, uh, the Interclub Kayak Pub Crawl which every year is uh, terrific. But I'm gonna say that the best uh, event at uh, the Legion this year was the Army-Navy game. I had a terrific time with it. Uh, I, of course, I love the fact that uh, Army won. The weather wasn't so good, but gee, I had, a, I had a great time in there. So the best Legion event in 2018 for my money was the uh, Army-Navy game. Now, when we uh, turn to uh, uh, cookies, which I think has become a pretty important topic, 2018 saw some pretty good, uh, pretty good entries in the cookie department. Uh, Chips Ahoy has been experimenting with different combinations on the chocolate chip cookies. Oreos uh, introduced uh, Mega Stuff Oreos, which really, really good. And uh, I, I came in contact with uh, Tate's, which is uh, Billy's favorite cookie. But by a wide margin, in my opinion, the finest uh, cookie of 2018 was uh, Oreos uh, uh, limited edition Mickey Mouse birthday uh, cookies. I really liked them. Uh, I think you will too, and if you, you might still be able to get them in the store. Uh, so, best cookie of 2018, the Mickey Mouse Oreos. And that does it for the awards. All right, so you've got my views, and I'll tell you what, I think uh, other recap fans would like to hear yours. And, uh, you know, you, you could conceivably disagree with me, it's uh, quite okay. Uh, but why not, why not send an email and, and uh, you know, say what you think. So anyway, that's, uh, that wraps up the recap for uh, 2018. 
I'm hoping that uh, we all have a great, great 2019. I'll tell you what, I'm going to see you next year. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you